Hello everyone, are you curious about TikTok but have absolutely no idea what it is, how to use it and whether it's even relevant for brands? Is it even too late to be asking some of these questions? Well, this relative newcomer on the block has been getting a lot of attention recently and it's for good reason. It has more than 800 million active users worldwide and sure, 41% of these are Gen Zers, but even us millennials want in on the action. The app seems to have been on most of our radars for at least six months, but it remains a very big question mark for both consumers and for brands. And why all the hype, you ask? Well, the average user is reported to spend a whopping 51 minutes per day on the platform. So in an attention economy, that is nothing short of a gold rush. And whilst the New York Times aptly described it as a refreshing outlier in the social media universe that's genuinely fun to use, I can sympathize with you if you downloaded the app and left more confused than when you began because it is quite a marked departure from many of its predecessors. That is of course where I come in. Hello, my name is Megs and I release videos every week helping you to do digital better. That of course involves demystifying the latest social media trends. So today we are going to be talking about what TikTok actually is, some of its core features, how to make money from it and where the brands should be jumping on board and what are some of those pros and cons look like. If you like the video please don't forget to hit subscribe and give me a big thumbs up. If the video gets more than a thousand likes I will be sure to release a part two. Let's get into it. So first things first, TikTok is of course a leading destination for short form mobile video. So their mission is essentially to inspire creativity and bring joy to people. So in other words, it's kind of like a micro vlogging platform, which is defined by the fact that most TikToks are 15 seconds long with the max being a minute. So users mainly use the platform for dance challenges, lip syncing to songs or quotes, or showing off their party tricks, literally no matter how random. So it's less of a competition about status and more about lighthearted performances and viral challenges. Other awesome features include the ability to go live if you have more than a thousand followers and it's very smart move to actually let you share out to any platform you like. This means it's easy to mix and match and cross promote your TikTok on let's say your IG stories. So once you've released your latest TikTok you can share that out and of course it does still have the TikTok logo on it but it means that the consumer of that content doesn't have to have TikTok installed. So where other platform creators felt like this wasn't best practice because it meant that you didn't obviously have to go and install the app in order to watch the content it actually creates an enormous sense of FOMO which probably results in you downloading the app in any case. It was formed in 2016 as part of an acquisition of a very popular app called Musical.ly and it's really taken on a life of its own since then. But its parent company ByteDance is huge. It's actually valued at more than 75 billion US dollars and it describes itself as an artificial intelligence company and not a social media platform, which is an important fact because it explains one of the key differences between TikTok and some of its other social media apps which we have come to know and love. One of the things that people may find disorientating is the fact that you land straight on the For You page. And if you're wondering what the hashtag FYP is, there you go. So that is my first kind of noob top tip for you is when people hashtag that, of course, they're trying to get onto the For You page, which is your landing page on TikTok. And so that is what you see when you click on Home. If you then go into Discover, this is obviously great because it shows you exactly what the trending hashtags are of the day. And I guess we would recognize this kind of functionality from Twitter. So it's just fun as you kind of wake up in the morning, if you are a TikTok fan, obviously, just to check what other people are creating and yeah, how you could possibly jump on one of those trends and leverage yourself. Then there's an inbox, which is kind of like a DM functionality. So that's very straightforward. And then a me tab, which shows you your TikTok profile and allows you to edit as well. Here you can see is actually where you create your TikTok. And starting from the top right hand corner, you can either flip, you can change the speed of the recording. So it can either be slower or faster. You can put on a beauty mode um, and then you can also look at the filters. I mean, 
this is super recognizable from pretty much any other social media platform, but nevertheless. Okay, cool. And then the timer obviously is just that. So it can either give you three seconds warning or 10 seconds warning, which is obviously essential if you're trying to do a dance and get from your phone to um, where you're taking your dance from. So if you said start countdown, there you go. Three, two, one. <laughs> and then it just starts recording. Um, so that is that. And then if you press the back button, it just confirms if you want to discard the last clip. So you just say confirm. So you can see in the top kind of bar, it's creating um, an amalgamation of your little clips. So basically what that means is you're not having to film something in one go, like Instagram stories, I guess. Um, it's quite a key distinction from that in that instance. And then probably the most important thing is that on the very top of your screen, you'll see sounds and sounds allows you to choose which song you're going to be doing your TikTok to. As you can see in the top, it's just saying sexy bag, illustrating that that is obviously what you're going to be doing your challenge to. So that's kind of the key functionality. Um, in terms of editing your stories, obviously it can get quite complex. Um, but most people advise just editing on the TikTok platform. I'm sure you can use Premiere Pro and all the fancy editing equip equipment that us YouTubers use, but most people create some pretty creative stuff just using the app. So that is a basic run through of the functionality on the app itself. On most social media platforms, of course, the first step to having people see your content is that grind to create the audience. And that is often on the back of having lots of friends or being very wealthy or even very beautiful. And TikTok instead encourages people to leap from audience to audience and from trend to trend. So it thereby creates almost like simulated temporary friendship group. And if we compare that to something like Twitter, we know obviously the Twitter gained popularity from people following other people and being followed back. And only once they went public and they had enough content that they actually needed to then decide upon an algorithm that would determine what to serve you and what not. It feels like TikTok has really kind of surpassed that. It doesn't then need to work out based on who you follow and who follows you, what to serve to you. It makes a set of assumptions which get more and more accurate over time. So where machine intelligence was as an afterthought on these platforms, TikTok was born out of that. So it bypassed that very kind of familiar self-directed feed and instead it bases its user's experience almost entirely on algorithmic observation and an inference thereof. So the most obvious clue of this is that when you open the app, the first thing you'd see is not your friends. It's a page called For You. And this is an algorithmic feed based on videos that you've interacted with or even just watched. So that means it's never gonna run out of content. And for this self same reason, hashtags play a surprisingly big role in TikTok too. Twitter, of course, hoped that users would comment congregates around hashtags in mini discourses. But that wasn't always the case. In TikTok, hashtags actually exist as a real and functioning organizing principle. So it's not for news. And a lot of these things aren't trending anywhere other than TikTok, but they are necessary for various challenges or jokes or the repeating formats that TikTok obviously follows. TikTok, in other words, is doing away with many of these other assumptions that other social media platforms were built upon and in some instances are in the throes of discarding now. So it's actually questioning the primacy of those individual connections and friendship networks and unapologetically embracing the control rather than pretending like it doesn't have an algorithm. So TikTok's real influence could of course also be that that's kind of the way forward for social media networks, basically questioning friendships and how relevant that necessarily is in the content that you wish to see online. I'm sure by now the elephant in the room is how are people actually making money on the TikTok platform? Well, do not worry, your girl has got you covered. I am going to be breaking down eight ways in which I've heard people talk about making sweet, sweet moolah on TikTok. And the first way is through a brand deals and sponsorships. So the figure that I see getting thrown around is having 250,000 followers for this to be a reality. But I find this kind of hard to believe because as we know, when it comes to Instagram influencers, of course, it depends on a brand and their objectives and whether they're looking for a nano influencer, a micro influencer, 
or a really big influencer. And I think the same could be said for TikTok. But it goes without saying that regardless, your quality would need to be really great. You would need to post at a very consistent kind of pace. So that would be probably two or three times a day. And you could work with a brand either on a monthly basis or on a paid shout out basis, which is not quite a brand deal, but the same as you would on Instagram. See, for example, a sponsored post. You could do a similar thing with TikTok. And you would also need to include a business email and mention that you're open to sponsorships if this is something you are looking to do with your TikTok account. The second way that you can make money is similar to the first, and that is still in the influencer space. But instead of you having that influence, you could find a friend or an acquaintance who has a big following on TikTok and offer to broker brand deals for them. So apparently TikTok does actually offer this service, but it takes quite a hefty chunk from the brand deal. So if you were able to offer a lower cut so that someone doesn't have to pay TikTok such a large part of their brand deal, maybe they would be willing to work with you on a lower percentage basis and essentially you would broker the agreement make sure that both parties are happy with the content that gets produced and that the deliverable is obviously delivered on time and to the spec and standard that the brand is wanting in terms of my third way and this way is a way way less obvious than the first two and that is the fact that tiktok actually has its own currency called coins and if you go to the top right hand corner you'll see the three dots where you can click onto balance and then retard and here in south africa we see that 65 coins costs you a 14 rand dollars and 99 so of course this depends on the region that you are in but what it means is if someone goes live and remember they need a thousand subscribers in order to do this you can actually give them coins so this could be an auction or a charity donation they convert those into diamonds when they receive them and then they can change them over to cash using PayPal. Did you guys know that? I didn't. Another more obvious way is going on to ads.tiktok.com and seeing actually TikTok has its whole marketing side really well thought through. So you could offer brands your services to run ads on TikTok, for example, leveraging the formats that TikTok has available on its ads platform. In the same way, management and consulting services. So bear in mind that the marketing teams for many brands are not necessarily hip and young and funky people. So they would be more than willing in certain instances to pay for the expertise and the kind of... Um, down with the kids um, attitude of a consultant who knows way more about TikTok and way more about the youths than possibly they do. So this is another w option that you could consider if you are very affair with a TikTok platform and you would like to work with brands in some capacity. In terms of my next top tip, I've heard that people make very good money selling TikTok accounts. <laughs> so much as you would kind of build up an Instagram following and then sell that off, you can do the exact same thing on TikTok. The seventh way that we're going to look at how people make money on TikTok is such an interesting way to me because this is all about cross promotion of platforms. So we all, of course, know that YouTube can be monetized. So if a creator has more than 4,000 watch hours and more than 1,000 subscribers, they can then monetize the platform, which means that they are making money from the videos that they cre can create. And so therefore, if they release promotional content on their TikTok, which drives people to their YouTube channel, of course, they're going to make more money from their AdSense that month um, because it's resulting in traffic on YouTube. And the same could be said for Instagram too. So if you are an influencer trying to grow your influence, then of course you would make more money from brand deals if you had a bigger Instagram following, which you can of course get from TikTok because it really is one of those platforms that does drive traffic quite efficiently. The eighth and final way that I've read about people making money on TikTok is through compilation videos. Now, this is so clever. So further to my previous point, the way that people make money off of their YouTube AdSense, there are a lot of TikTok compilation accounts, which you may have seen pop up in and around YouTube. And basically what people do is they download their favorite TikToks and they organize them in a compilation. But this does come with some slight hiccups, which is, of course, the that YouTube will demonetize any videos which don't have rights for audio. 
So what that would mean is if you did want to go down this road, you would have to look at using TikToks, which wouldn't result in you becoming demonetized. So in other words, that would be things like pranks or original sounds that creators have made their TikToks to, because otherwise you ain't going to make no money. In terms of TikTok's pros and cons from a brand perspective specifically, both the biggest pro and the biggest con will be this very young audience. So how young is exactly a Gen Z -er, as us marketers like to call them? Well, according to Wikipedia, a Gen Z -er is described as a person born from the mid 1990s till the early 2010s. A millennial, on the other hand, is born as early as the early 1980s. This goes all the way up to the mid 1990s. So Gen Z, -er, it really is a young audience, but depending on the kind of category and industry this may be of kind of concern or not and if you are marketing real estate which I see a lot of people do I do kind of question I'm like what is the disposable income of this target audience but maybe in certain markets and particularly in America maybe it is legitimate for um, automotive brands to still advertise on something like TikTok but as I say, it would depend on the brand and its kind of objectives. Um, it does have a really cool ad platform, which I'm going to show you guys in just a second. But in terms of its three major ad formats that a brand can run, it can run uh, in-feed native videos. So this just appears in your normal TikTok scroll uh, whilst you're exploring content. You can do a full screen video ad as soon as the a TikTok app opens, so basically like a takeover. Or the third one would be a hashtag challenge. And these normally last about six days and it involves you being able to essentially like sponsor a hashtag. Um, and those are your three kind of key ways that you can market as a brand on TikTok. In terms of cons, the defunct Musical.ly was actually levied the biggest fine that the Federal Trade Commission had ever given out in terms of mismanagement of data users. So I would say that there is a lot of criticism around that um, and possibly the data laws are less strict in China. I'm not 100% sure, but you can be assured that Facebook and Instagram with all the scrutiny that they've been receiving more recently, they will be kind of adhering to the hilt when it comes to data privacy. But TikTok, I guess you just don't know necessarily and especially with a younger company it, it doesn't have that track record or kind of credibility and finally the other con that i often hear people talking about is the uh, push notifications so as a brand maybe this is a pro because they know that the app is consistently triggering people and targeting people to log back in but as a consumer maybe this could result in fatigue and causing the app to really burn brightly initially now while it's novel but then kind of die a sudden death thereafter again it totally remains to be seen but those are the key kind of pros and cons for brands Ain't no one to ride